in South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Bonnie Bully. Today on the show, we're taking a look at two organizations that are truly making a difference in their communities. Uh, firstly, we have Lindy Oshibambu, who is the founder of Made For You, a domestic worker agency that not only helps women find employment, but also provides them with the training that they need. Then we're taking a look at The Carpenter Shop, an organization in Cape Town that provides ablutions and shelter to homeless people, as well as basic skills training to anyone who's unemployed and looking to improve their chance of finding work. Work. And for Winner Home on Afternoon Express today, our three design contestants get briefed on their second challenge. What will it be? You'll have to stay tuned to find out. Stay tuned to find out what Dan's up to in the kitchen. Indeed, yo. Good afternoon, South Africa. I'm Danilo Aquis, and I'm joined by our resident chef, Clem Pedro, today. We're continuing this week of ultimate on the show today uh, as we kind of explore two different types of meals, build up till Father's Day. I know this weekend is coming very fast, and I've got my cousin's birthday on Thursday, and then Father's Day on Sunday. I do not know what to do, so I'm going to take all this advice that I can get. Good, and it's a lot to take in. Okay. So, Willies have asked me to come up with two dishes today mm -hmm. for two of their signature dads, the Dapper Dad, and the adventurous dad. Ah. So I've got a few little tricks and I've got some special guests in the loft as well today. Ooh, yeah. so keeping his, what do you call it, cards close to his sleeve? What is the thing? His yes. That's whatever, exactly what it is. cars close to the chest. If you guys <laughs> want to find the recipe and the shopping list, go to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. There you can find everything we make on Afternoon Express. It's going to be delicious in the kitchen today. So make sure you stay tuned for all those surprises. Do not change that dial between now and 5 p.m. Bonnie's got our first guest on the couch. So after finishing high school, she became a domestic worker to be able to pay for her varsity fees. And after studying, she went into banking, but left the financial industry to go full circle and open up her own domestic workers agency called Made For You. Today, the business has numerous awards under the belt, including the most jobs created and best performing company award at the Shakunda Black Umbrellas Awards in 2013, and the top SMME award at the second annual South African Premier Business Awards. Joining us on the couch is the owner of Made For You. Lindy Oshibambo. Welcome, Lindy. Hi, hi, hi. Lovely Please. to have you in the loft. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so you're a perfect example of life giving you lemons and you deciding to make lemonade. I can't imagine what it would have felt like when you saw all your peers go off to varsity and make decisions about this new phase of their lives and you couldn't. What kept you motivated? What were your thoughts around that time? I think my thought around that time was that I, I had a dream, I had a vision. There are certain things that I wanted to achieve. My major goal was to get out of poverty and I had to, I had to keep my focus, I had to keep my eye on the prize. And uh, I, I do understand that time and chance happen to, to all mankind and I, I understand that uh, every human being has their own time. And I had to take you know, a, a comfort in the fact that perhaps at that time it wasn't my time to go to university. Well, that's got a positive outlook to have at such a young age before you knew that you could ever even be successful at achieving your dreams. Were there people around you that were very motivating or empowering or mentors? Of course, I mean, first and foremost, my mom and dad. I mean, one of the things that they instilled in all of, all of us is that we need to study, we need to read, and we need to aspire to be more. And we shouldn't let the current situation and circumstance determine, you know, where you're going. So uh, I think, you know, their support and their encouragement kept me going. And, and I had to understand that I had to do something in the meantime was, you know, reaching for my dreams. And that's something that you did in the meantime was deciding to become a domestic worker. Yes. How did that decision make you feel at that time? I, first and foremost, it wasn't a decision that I consciously took. Yeah. It was because I was looking for a job. I mean, uh, I was unemployed and I didn't want to sit at home and do nothing. I was young and there's temptation in the township. I mean, you know, and I did not want to fall into those traps. So I felt that I need to do something and I was looking for a job and my auntie got me a job as a domestic worker with one of her colleagues in in Pretoria and, and I embraced it. And while you were working, you then saved money to study. Yes. I mean, how much, you couldn't have been making even that much money, so yes. you had to be quite vigilant and, and yes. strict about it. I, I, as as I'm, I said before, I had to really be focused on my dreams yeah. and I had to understand what I wanted and I had to understand why I'm there in the first place. But first and foremost, what I did was appreciate that particular opportunity. I was the best domestic worker in any ever because I understand that if you, 
in this step and you perfect it and you appreciate it and you're grateful for it, it's easier for the universe to step you up to the next level. Wow. And so at that particular moment, I took pleasure in what I was doing. I appreciated it. Of course, there were stigmas and, and negativity around what I was doing, but I knew what I was, why I was there and I had a wonderful employer. And, you know, I, I, kept, I kept focus. My focus was not to buy clothes and, and takeaways and all that. I knew I was there to make enough money hmm. to, to at least get a registration fee. Wow. So you eventually went back to study yes. and then you went into the banking industry. Yes. What did you learn there that you now use in, in your daily business practice? I think, you know what, um, in terms of, of the banking sector, it was a wonderful eye-opener for me in terms of business, in terms of corporate, in terms of, of time management. But it was the one sector that actually opened up my eyes to being a business person. Because I sort of learned a lot about myself. I understood that I was not good at taking instructions. <laughs> if anything, I wanted to give instructions. And secondly, I was welcomed by a majority of people that worked in the bank. And every time they were looking for a domestic worker, of course, they'll go to the girl from the township because the perception is she's got a thousand aunties that are unemployed. <laughs> so that's, that's where the whole, you know, story started. Yeah, and so then you decided, hey, I'm just going to start a domestic worker employment agency made for you. Yeah. And, and that came about around 2004 when I had my first child. Because, I mean, in the bank, everybody came to me, wanted a domestic worker or a nanny, and I'll do the best that I can to get them wonderful domestic workers from the township and the community I come from. Right. It wasn't a business. It was just something that I did for my colleagues. But after I had my first child, I discovered the challenges that employers go through, you know, looking for a nanny or a domestic worker. Mm. So I had, I had my daughter who was eczema, and she was very hyperactive, and I couldn't get a relevant nanny, someone who's got the skill, who's got the personality, who's got the love and kindness to take care of her. And I sort of had to sit and realize that I walked a mile in the shoe of a domestic worker. I understand the challenges that domestic workers go through, and yet I understand the challenges that employers go through. And I thought, let me fuse it together and, and come up with a solution. That's absolutely incredible. And what sets your company apart from all the other ones that are budding now in South Africa? First and foremost, I mean, this is founded by a former domestic worker. Secondly, the services that we do, it's, 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 it's a whole package. So we, we, we recruit from domestic workers, we recruit women from underprivileged areas, rural areas, you know, and then we train them and we take them through a training process hmm. where they can learn professional housekeeping, first aid, CPR, swimming, cooking, you know, you name it. And, and then we also make sure that, you know, employers are compliant. You know, we make sure that as soon as someone has been placed, they are registered for UIF, they have a provident fund, they've got a medical aid, they have a set of uniform, wow. and we also wow. create a network of, of support for them. So in case they are, you know, facing challenges like I had at the time, I mean, I was 18, 19 when I was a domestic worker. Yeah. And I walked into a household. That's really young. Very young. I walked in a household and they had a microwave. And half the time in my family home, we didn't have electricity. And my employer expected me to understand how to use that. So I sort of make sure that, you know, uh, the challenges that as employers we go through, it's, it's where we talk about orientation. It's where you assume that someone knows how to change a juve cover, but mm. they never had one. So those are the gaps wow. that I feel that as made for you, we close wow. and we, we make sure there's no exploitation. We make sure somebody has a network of sisters that they can come back to us and say, I have a challenge. This is a chemical. I don't know how to read it. I don't know how to use it. Help me. Yeah. And we also yeah. tell to employers, come back if there's a challenge. Speak to us. Let's help you. Yeah, you're such an inspiring woman, but we're not done yet. We'll be back to hear more of your story. So after the break, we're in the kitchen making a rare roast beef and Parmesan salad, and we share some great gifting ideas for Father's Day. Don't go away. A warm welcome back to Afternoon Express. So Father's Day is just around the corner. In the kitchen today, Clem, Pedro and myself will be making something super, super delicious because we're going ultimate today. But it is. Particularly with two dishes today. You, you really are spoiling us. It is. So we started off with the dish for the Dapper Dapper. First of all, mm -hmm. how amazing was that clip? It was Even super cool. ultimate music. Yeah, it was so ultimate music. But another thing that's ultimate, by the way, is we've got a very special surprise guest with us in the loft today. So you guys better stay tuned between now and pretty much the end of the show to find out who they are and what advice they have for you today. But before we get there, just to keep you in suspense, we're going to make a roast beef salad for Father's Day. It is. And not just any roast beef, it's going to be a rare roast beef, right? Sure. And I mean, it's rare, rare. So rare, it's like... Not cooked. 
There we go. Basically. Almost. So what we do, we've got, we got a fillet steak, which is a type of meat that doesn't have a lot of intramuscular fat, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're going to try and do is cook it fast, cook it hot. Yes. That's exactly what we're going to do right which now. It's super tender. It is one of the most flavorful meats. Oh, it's delicious. Cool. I want to try to drop the pan, but you keep on talking. Okay, cool. Done. Hot pan, smoking hot. That's a trick. And what we've done is we've oiled our fillet instead of oiled the pan. And you yes. know why. I know why, because it's... Helps with if you not oil burning the, it. If you oil the pan instead of the piece of meat, what happens is it smokes out the entire house mm. and you have to evacuate. It happens all the oh, time I in see. the loft. Okay. So I've yeah. learned my lesson, right? <laughs> yeah. Oil the meat instead of oiling the pan. What you end up with is a beautiful piece of seared fillet Ooh, like that this. That is perfectly done. Mm. Perfectly. So what I'm going to do is we've done, we did this recently. I made these parmesan crisps. Do you remember we did a bit of a, the yes. cheats dish? We're going to do it again. Parmesan and meat have something very in common. Mm -hmm. They both contain umami. Okay. So, right, it's Father's Day, but we're talking about Father's umami. Father's Day, umami, <laughs> I see where you're going with this, okay. So simply, all you do is you finely grate your Parmesan, okay. and then into a hot non-stick pan, again, just drop it in there. Oh, it's wow. gonna start melting oh, by itself. Oh, I see. You see it's happening, it's happening, and what's, you, as soon as you see the outsides start to caramelize, Brown. I mean, mm. it bubbles really quickly, it melts mm. down super fast. Take it out the pan, super carefully, use a pair of What's it called? A spatula. A spatula. And, and what you end up with are these beautiful Parmesan crisps. Oh and they firm up to become super hard. <gasps> Can I? I don't know if I'm allowed to steal one because they are. They're like, oh, they're like little they crisps. They are. And it's delicious. Mm. It's crazy. Mm. So, so I'm going to take this too. off the heat right now because we've got our seared steak yeah. and we've got our Parmesan crisps. What I'm going to ask you to do is. Sure. Can you grate some lemon zest in that bowl for me? That and I'm going to explain why in a minute. Well, Ooh. actually, that's for the dressing. So I'm going to ask you to kick it off. What <clears> I'm going to start doing. Oh, actually, you know what, Daniel? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything. But mm -hmm. I meant the little bowl. Oh, this is so awkward right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's perfectly fine. I'm a little bit fine. of a mess you here today. Okay, you so see, it's not into our serving bowl. I'm gonna sl Super start orcs. slicing our fillet, and you try and get this as thin <laughs> as possible. <laughs> you're doing a good job. You really are messing me around today because usually, if you want me to put something in the pan, you're like, tell me before, and like, listen, I might ask you to do something. This time, you're just leaving me in the dark here. It is, but I'm like letting the viewers see out there like you have the skills. Yes, okay. You don't need to be briefed or prompted. No, you know I'll what you're doing. No, I just do my own thing, you see? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, what's amazing about this dish, again, is a small piece of meat goes a really long way. Mm. We all know that fillet's quite expensive, right? Yes, it is. But because we're slicing it super thin, um, 250 grams of fillet would feed four people for this dish, which is amazing. That is pretty amazing, it actually, is. because I, I know people. A lot of pe people might say that you can't really keep salads and things, but if you've got this meat already sliced up beautifully like this, it can last you over a weekend. Just keep slicing a bit more of it up, and keep putting it in another new salad every single day. Because obviously, sometimes you might have guests that come uh, like the day afterwards or. Absolutely, like and for so. me, if someone says, would you like a salad? I'm like, sure, put 250 grams of meat in it first, yeah. <laughs> and then we're talking. Okay, so look at this beautiful plate that you've garnished for me with lemon zest. I know, zest. how delicious Can is it? Can I grab it? the lettuce leaves on? Sure, I'm yeah. using wild rocket. Again, bring it to that pungent flavor with the peppery wild rocket that have been dressed in lemon zest. Yes, yes. and also goes perfectly well. <clears throat> Got some uh, <coughs> parmesan in my throat. <laughs> uh, it goes perfectly well with a nice parmesan sort of flavor and the, and the meat itself. Are Absolutely. you going to do balsamic reduction? Uh, we're going to do that in the end. No, no, no. We almost no. there, almost there. Well, I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of maple for me. Sure. Into your, the dressing that you're busy making. I'm just going to plate the beef, okay. get it all beautiful. Hey, we're doing it I'm not you. I just have always had steak salads that are deliciously um, drizzled over with a nice sweet balsamic. You're using a different kind of sweetness It here, is. With so we've maple. got lemon zest in there, a little bit of maple, a little bit of olive, extra virgin olive oil. And just to add a little bit of saltiness to it, a little bit of a briny flavor. I'm going to add some capers. Okay. Something we don't really use that often, but something we, it's amazing, it's delicious, especially for this dressing. So I'm just going to go with a little bit of it. Oh, I love cool. capers so much that that adds nice saltiness to there. Cool, can you stir that through? Done. Cool, and then finally, our Parmesan crisps. I'm just going to like crack that over. Can drizzle can you this over. Go for the dressing. Ta-da. That's oh, our yum. Dapper Dad rare roast beef salad done. It looks so delicious. You've also put in a massive bowl, so that's a dad bowl with salad right Portion over there. Portion for one. But I've got <laughs> someone on the side. I want you to go chat You do. It. Before I go and chat to him, don't forget that you guys can get this recipe from our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Now let's go and meet our special How guest about you for the go? day. You go. Today, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man who should be sleeping right now, Katlecho, my boy. Welcome to the show, dude. Hey, South Africa, how are you doing? Dude, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> Last time you were talking to me about, uh, uh, what you call it, great before eight. You being great before eight, which you are. Now we're speaking about you, what happens when you become 80, great to be when you're 80, and Father's Day <laughs> gifts. Um, we, you're not a dad, just no, public, I, I, public thing, you're not I'm a dad. Not, I'm not a father, but this is a public service announcement to all possible future bays. 
<laughs> what? What's, this, what's the announcement? <laughs> these, these are the kind of gifts that I think okay. as, as a dapper dad that I'd like to have. And I want to I want to start off there because to me it's critical sure. that every man has a good wristwatch, mm -hmm. uh, especially one with a particularly bold face, whether square or round, whichever you prefer. I prefer the round face because you've got to be able to tell the time. You, yes. know? Of you, course, don't, you that, don't tell people helpful. what the time is, you tell the time. There's a difference. <laughs> and also the old, obvious thing with your children and stuff, you want to make sure that they're on time. The, dad, the, your... dad, we're going to go to sports. Mm. Yes, Or that yes. she's not out, out too late Junior. after midnight. Right, yeah. Get in the car, exactly. That cool. kind what of other thing. gifts do you have for dads um, that are dapper? Of course, no outfit is ever complete without a good belt. We don't mm -hmm. do none of this sagging pants. Oh, no, thing. no and no, those no. material belts with like tear at the end no, and then never that. Keep them. Keeping it nice and classy, gentlemanly, of course, a good pair of shades mm -hmm. when you're doing a bit of a walkabout from the office to wherever it is you are enjoying lunch on the day. And of course, we travel with a lot of gadgets. There's your phone, there's your tablet, yes. there's this and that. You want to have a nice, good satchel. Brown is my favorite color when it comes to these kinds of accessories. As you you called it a satchel, but it's a man yeah. bag. Like, no, it's I a think, man bag, I but it's a satchel. All oh, oh, right, well, wh whoever you know wants to own that kind of term, <laughs> that's yours to go with. And of course, the dapper dad is the thinking dad. I'm, yes. I'm, a, I'm a person who likes to put a lot of thought into mm. my day, so having a cool little notebook like that with nice little trimmings, you know, ah. kind of makes it fun for you to open up, uh, jot a few thoughts down. If you're a songwriter like me, then mm. you do that. Exactly. Um, and obviously, being a dapper dad is something that you are very passionate about. You're a dapper guy as a youngster. I don't think that's going to disappear when you get a lot older. No, no, you no, also no. want to keep that style going into the future. You don't have to like let all of the stuff go and let all the, that style that you've built up go. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so yes, and to that we what add is this? the classic look, man. For me, I always have the wow. saying that blues and browns will never let you down, okay? Mm. We've kept it with a, a, a cool little shade of blue called indigo, if you will. Oh. A nice classic dapper jacket and of course the classic leather glove, which uh, is, I think, rightly suited for the winter season. Dude, absolutely amazing. You've got some really great advice for Father's Day. Your father's probably going to be getting something super amazing. <laughs> and by the way, if you want to get any of these ideas that catch us here with us today, you can go and get them all from Woolies. It's specially available for you. It's got great Great gifts for all the different types of dads that are out there. Later on in the show, we'll be sharing some gifts about the adventurous dad. You don't want to miss it. Over to you, Bonnie. Earlier, we had the inspiring story of how Lindy Weshibambo went from being a domestic worker to owning her own domestic worker agency. She joins us again on the couch. Welcome back. So, what are some of the rights, basic rights, of domestic workers that you think are grossly neglected in South Africa? I think first and foremost, we need to understand that this is a sector that is legislated. It is governed by the Labor Relations Act, Sectoral Determination 7. And, you know, we do have on our website a booklet that you can read. But one of the things is your, a domestic wear has a right to a, a pay slip and a job contract and a work schedule. Yeah. And, you know, the calculations in terms of leaves, just so that as an employer you are at peace, would be calculated on that particular pay slip. And, you, you know, issues of CCMA will not arise as long as initially there was a, a written contract and there was a, a job spec in terms of what is expected of them. And every month you issue out a pay slip. Right. Yes. Wow. So we've got Sana Mabena on the line, who is a Made For You graduate and is now a helper and nanny. Hello, Sana. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thanks, Daniel. I'm good. Welcome to Afternoon Express. So how has your experience been at Made For You and how have you grown from it? Um, I experienced a lot of things. Um, firstly, at Made For You, they, exp they inspire me. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Carry on, Sana. Uh, made For You, they inspire me with a job. I wasn't thinking for. Help me a lot, and I guarantee made for you. It can help me. It can help other people who want show. Thank you so much, Sana. So one question I want to ask you is. So there's amongst my friends and I, we're always having this discussion about. There seem to be myths that domestic workers have about working for other black females. Yes. And there seems to be this contentious relationship. Is this true and what's, what's informing it? It is true. I mean, we, I interact with so many domestic workers on a daily basis. We do conduct workshops where I get to interact with them and speak to them and understand what the challenges are. But when you look at it, it's, if you look at where this country is coming from, the history of our country has socialized us as black people to believe that a certain color is of superiority. You cannot respect your own. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of education and teaching that needs to go mm. around that. But secondly, also we have reports that, uh, you know, we have a lot of employers that treat other black employees 
in a very bad way compared to other other races. So and and you know. We and is that a stigma or is that true? You know what? It's it's it would be I would say forty five percent true. Oh. Uh, we've had experiences where I think uh, as, as, as black people we get to a point where perhaps when you've reached a certain level in terms of you know, your achievements and your success, you tend to sort of then undermine your own. And uh, if you look at the history of the country, and what I'm proud to say is that most professionals, academics in this country, were raised by domestic workers. Yeah, yes. yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. We've got another caller on the line, Mpo Matsunyane on the line, who also graduated from Made for You. Hello, Mpo. Hi. How are you? Welcome to Afternoon Express. Yes. <laughs> what would you like to share with us about your experience at Made For You? Oh, well, Made For You gave me a job. I met uh, Lynn U.S. from 2011. Yes? Yes, and uh, I was working for Patrola at Water Park. Okay. Then that's why I met Lynn U.S. And he was a good person, anyway. He gave me a job. Till now, I was just in my position as a person for the domestic workers. Right. Congratulations, yeah. Mpo. Is there anything yeah. else you'd like to say? No, I say, can God bless the wind wave for everything that I do. All right. Um, that's fine. Thank you, Mpo. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> another, another question I'd like to ask you is in South Africa, People don't see domestic work and being a nanny as, as something that's a career and a vocation. It's something people tend to see as a circumstantial situation that you, something you do in the meantime while you hope to move on to do something else. How do we change that perspective? Because they're a valuable part of society and they contribute greatly to people's well-being. I think first and foremost what we have also been challenging government to do was to to professionalize the sector and declare it a profession. Because uh, in this today's economy, when you're looking for a domestic worker or a nanny, you look for someone professional. So um, uh, recently we have a lot of demands for people who can drive and people who can swim. Hence, we're introducing that to our curriculum. Wow. So um, it, it's, it's about us having to, to unite as a country and say this is a profession. And these people contribute towards the economy. They contribute towards UIF. And we have a majority of them that ends above the tax threshold, therefore contribute Wow, towards tax. Wow. So I, I think also as human beings and, and, and as we're speaking about high percentages of unemployment in this country, we also need to look at, of course, I might have studied one, two, three, four qualifications, but how can I not, you know, can I not grab an opportunity that is there? And you might, in most households, if, if we have to be fair, most households take the domestic work as part of their family. Yeah. Therefore, they end up taking care of their children. They end up taking the domestic worker children to university, paying for their tax institutions yes. and so forth because a domestic worker it comes into your personal space therefore you know becomes part of the a family very vital part of your so, family so yeah, yeah i think as a country you also need to look at that young people need to look at that as an opportunity yeah. Yeah. you can start off as a domestic worker your employer can actually take you to university yeah. to further your own studies that's incredible thank you so much Lydia. you've thank been you. absolutely inspirational thank so today we're running a very special competition if you're a young south african with an interest in entrepreneurship and would like to see how lindy runs her successful business head over to our facebook page right now and tell us why you deserve the opportunity to spend a day with lindy one lucky you will get to hang out with Lindy Wear for a day, including lunch and a chance to pick her brain. This competition is only available to viewers based in Joburg. T's and C's apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. After the break, we take a look at an organization called The Carpenter Shop and our winner home design contestants get briefed on their second challenge. Don't go away. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, they do say that the best gifts sometimes are the ones that got the most heart in them. So today on Afternoon Express, if you haven't yet bought a gift for your father for Father's Day, we've got a few ideas for you coming up with another special guest with us on the show today. Stay tuned to see who it is. But today, also in the kitchen, we're making some delicious food which you can put your whole heart and soul into and make for your father on Father's Day. And the dish we're making today is something that a lot of people say, like, I saw you. What? Yeah, I saw you at the bar. Bar? Me? me? Oh, you see, no. like making a balmy sandwich. We are spending sandwich. too much time together. <laughs> <laughs> I can't anymore. Okay, so what is a balmy sandwich? Okay, so it's a Vietnamese-inspired sandwich. Huh. Basically, it's got either chicken, beef, prawns, whatever protein you want to go with, and then pickled vegetables. So Ooh. I'm thinking this is for the adventurous dad, right? We're trying to be adventurous, a little yeah. different food. It's quite pungent, quite like really acidic. But you balance it all out with a little bit of mayonnaise, a little mm. bit of onion marmalade. 
So this is going to be an adventure song. It sounds delicious. It I'm cool. ready to get going. So what I'm going to start off with is, you see, originally I had planned, I had this big baguette, because you have to use a baguette for a mm -hmm. barmy. Okay. So I thought, being an adventurous dad, you're making a big baguette, wrap it up, put it in your backpack. Yeah. The whole thing, I mean, <laughs> yeah. last year ever. But we're not doing that today. So I've cut it into smaller pieces. Okay, for that dad who's also adventurous but wants to share. There we go. So I'm going to toast it in a little bit of butter. This is just an extra. I don't know if you heard yesterday, Bonnie spoke about how she... Actually, before she sent her kid to school, she toasted his hot dog buns. Oh, cute. It's no, a... I didn't get that, but you love to toast your buns exactly. always. Y yes, yes, oh, totally. Same. So, and it's very important that you do it. Creates more texture, always. Why are you okay. at a laugh? You're no, so because you're terrible okay, with cool. your bun jokes in this laugh. So what I've got is I've got some carrots, some okay. red onions, and some radishes and cucumber. Now, we've been practicing our knife skills on the show, right? Yes. So you know about julienne. Yes, and julienne slices. nice and long and thin, yes. And the, the trick is to keep it all the same size because you want it to all pickle mm. at the same time. Okay. So what I've done is, in this pot over here, I've got some vinegar, some mm -hmm. chili, some peppercorns, and some sugar. Always Ooh. about the balance. You yes, I see. About? Okay, cool. So you've got a bit of burn, a bit of, uh, like, sort of tart, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. That, that's, your, that's your basic pickle. Oh, is it? So okay. what I'm going to do is pour that in there. Shame these poor... It's quite these, strong, eh? Yeah, they must be a bit confused now. It is. They're about to have a bit of a pickle. There <laughs> Cucumber, carrots in, red onion, mm -hmm. and radishes. So that goes in. Cool, all done. Let that sit for a bit. It's going to start pickling. I'll give it like half an hour and you're good to Just go. So it doesn't want to touch the liquid at all like that, or it must try and touch the liquid the whole yes, way through, so it keeps stirring it through. it through. Okay, just double checking. Oh, People at home don't know this. You guys don't know this. Now you know. Okay, cool. So I'm using... Actually, what I'm going to ask you to do first... Sure. It's just add a layer of mayonnaise to me, for me on cool. the base, and then a little bit of onion marmalade. Can I use and this I'm, to do the mayo? You can, absolutely. I'm not going to mix it through, right? Because yeah. what I want is to have this still that... The difference, you only need to taste the mayonnaise and taste the onion marmalade separately. Yes, okay, Okay, cool. that's extra flavor. So what I've done is I've used Willie's free-range chicken breasts. Okay. I don't know about you, but if you're going to serve chicken, I rate you should make sure it's always free-range. Yes, always. And that's the trick. Besides the fact that it's just more responsibly sourced, mm. also, it, just, it actually does taste better. And it's more tender. For some reason, I promise you, the meat that I always buy that's free-range has always got a much tender fillet to all the others, and it's juicier. It's very doesn't true. dispense a whole bunch of water. When you start cooking it, it's a great, great choice. So the tip is start off with a good ingredient, and 90% of the work is done. Okay. Cool. So onion marmalade on there. There we go. Also on the top of the same side. There we go. That's cool. exactly what you need to do. But try not to let them touch too much. I get that. Okay, cool. Cool. That's Next part, done. I'm going to start plating some of these vegetables down. Cool, go cool. for it. Good job, good job. I'd like to have added more um, mayo <laughs> then, to the one um, side. Oh, yeah. perfect. <laughs> you, want, you said you want different textures and flavors as you go, so as you bite through this exactly thing, why I like it's going it. to change. It's dynamic, Sami. Okay, cool. I'm going to thinly slice this. Actually, no, you know what? I know the guy that's going to be eating the sandwich loves his protein. I'm not going to okay. slice it up. I'm giving him Whole. a mean amount of chicken. Okay? <laughs> okay. There we go. There we go. So now, I don't know, I have not gotten over my sriracha craze. Yes. Have you? Never, ever, no. ever. So I get all my sriracha from Willie's. I'm just going to give that a little drizzle. Oof. Cool. Yummy. That looks and delicious just like that. And that's the balmy sami done. Man, you okay. can even leave that as an open sami. It looks delicious just like that. If you are thinking of making your adventurous dad something for Father's Day, then this is the perfect dish to make. You can get the recipe from our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. You can also find the shopping list for when you're about to go to all your groceries in the next few days or so. So, adventurous dad needs an adventurous dad, right? Adventurous dad sami. There we go. I'm going to go meet him. Go meet us, Avengers Dad. Go. So, who do you think it is, ladies and gentlemen? Who will it be? Who will it be? It's you and Stratum from Expresso Morning Show. Hello. The glasses on because you've Hello. been sleeping no, all I'm day. No, I'm just, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, adventures dad, dad, no need that uh, they need to look adventures all the time, but they can look cool as well, totally. you see. You we see? did not say adventures just, dad is terribly I just, looking. I just wanted to do this, you know, just this <laughs> whole, like, be cool kind of vibes. But it's cool. Sold. Lucky to be here, man. Segment done. We don't even talk about the products. It's sold. Everyone's <laughs> going to go buy the sunnies. It's good to have you, man. So yeah, dude. Talk us through what you would want, because obviously you're a father, and you're very adventurous in your nature, and you're very physically active and things. So tell us what you would want to get from your kids as an adventurous dad. Look, this is cool. Like, um, you know, yeah, outdoors being one uh, one thing. Yeah, I spend a lot of time there um, playing with the boys as well. Yeah. You know, I spend time with the family, with the dogs on the beach. So so it's great to be outdoors. But I think Father's Day, you want to feel spoiled. You, yes, know? you want to okay. have something nice, you know, come to your come your way. Not the usual kind yes. of stuff, you know. So so this is great. This is a great selection right here. I'm going to start with this carry bag, which is a fantastic gift. I mean, so cool. You know, you know, like 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 mom baby bags is yes. a big thing, you know. Like, I don't know, mom always fuss about like, oh, my baby bag looks like this. It needs to look cool. Mm -hmm. But I mean, this is the perfect thing. I mean, if you want to be a dad. Nice. 
Dad, you're out with the kids, right? Yes, and you can fit picnic stuff Everything. in here if it's not even for the kids. Dude. If you're just an adventurous dad who's got older children, this Absolutely. can go anywhere. And it seems hardy too. This is a great like daddy bag. It's mm. fantastic. And then of course your man mut arma lakapar fellise. Alla mut ya. Mut lakapar fellise. So these are absolutely great. I mean, it's stylish. It goes with jeans, uh, khaki sh uh, khaki mm. pants as well. Fantastic, fantastic gift. And they're hardy. And they're mm. hardy as well. They will last you for years. Then I've got a beautiful cardigan here. That's, that's I mean, knitted, oh, it's yes, great. I mean, man. when was the last time you really wore something nice knitted? You well, know? probably yesterday, but that's yeah, not the whatever. point. I'm not the adventurous dad. I'm now adventurous dad's cat. <laughs> I mean, that's great. I mean, great yes. for the outdoors, especially heading into winter right now. I mean, yes. it's cold outside at the moment. This is just the thing to get your dad. A little flask as well. I mean, for those dads who like to put a little something, something in there, you know, just to keep warm Fishing as well. dads, adventure dads always have something. I was Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Wouldn't survive. No. And then, of course, a travel mug. Yes. I mean, but look at this nice little cool. wooden detail on the side nice. as well, just to keep your beverage nice and hot when you're out. Maybe you're walking, maybe in the forest, yeah. whatever the case may maybe be. Maybe you're stalking some prey. You want to make sure that it's just at least camouflaged. Yeah, who I knows? See how who it knows? Works. Yeah, obviously. You see, <laughs> you know. And then a, a, a scarf is always a good one to go with as well. You know, dad okay. want to feel stylish and sweet. that's <laughs> actually going to go nicely together. So you're quite a stylish dad, but obviously dads like yourself are also active in the gym and things too. I know some protein is probably helpful. Is this why this is here. Fellies and biltong. This is the best of them. Fellies and biltong. Any battle. So so. <laughs> Built on definite. I mean, you can't go wrong. Moms, you know, kids out there, if you want to get your dad something, you cannot go wrong with yeah. built on, right? Especially if, you're, if he loves his rugby. Yeah. But I must say, you've chosen wisely because it's not just any kind of packet of built on, it's bulk built on. It's bulk built on, yeah. For a real dad. Look, it's going to last you at least a weekend, which is exactly. fantastic. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ewan, for bringing <laughs> through pleasure. your adventure items. If you want to get any of these suggestions that Ewan's made for us today, you can guys can get them from Woolies. Whole bunch of other options available for you for the Dapper, as well as the Adventurous Dad, and so many others. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, live on SABC3. Now, we know that South Africa has a high rate of unemployment, particularly amongst its youth. According to 2014 statistics, 5.1 million people in South Africa are unemployed. In the Western Cape alone, 48% of youth are under the age of 25 and unemployed. Now, the Carpenter Shop, an organization in Cape Town run by social workers, vocational trainers, and social development practitioners, believes that all people should have an opportunity to work and to experience the dignity of supporting their families. We're joined by James McDonald, social enterprise manager, to learn more about their amazing work. Welcome to the laugh, James. Thank you. So what is the Carpenter Shop and how did it come to be established? Mm. The Carpenter Shop provides opportunity to people that might otherwise not have an opportunity. So it's at, at different levels. And it came about at the social care level in providing showers and washing facilities for unemployed people hmm. and generally homeless people as well. It's grown from that to also provide training and small business opportunities for individuals. Yeah. And what kind of people come through your doors and how do they find out about your organization mm. and, and have access to it? Yeah. I think at the, the social care level, it's there's a network and people talk word about it. It's word of mouth yes. and, and people uh, learn from that uh, perspective. We provide showering for roughly 50 to 60 people every day. Every day? Every day and access to washing their clothes it's between, between certain times of day. And that gives our social workers opportunity to interact with people. Yeah. Find out what their needs are, find out how we can try and reintegrate them back into society. Yeah. And I mean, at a resource level and cost level, wh what, what does that cost you on a daily basis? It costs, my understanding, just the showering facilities and washing facilities, it's, it's more than likely 50 rand per, per individual. Per individual. Yeah. Because we have toiletries and we have the other things as well. So um, on the other end of the scale, the training side of things, we're paying roughly 15,000 rand per individual for a six-month course to set up their own yeah, business. Yeah, mm. And what skills are available at your organization that you actually train people in? At the moment, we've got a car wash where we have a hub, a car wash hub, and that acts as an R&D facility. It also acts as a training facility. And individuals will come in, there's a selection process, and these are at a, a, a level where they have the capability of running their own business. Wow. And we provide those skills to run, to run the business. But one of the criteria is that we want them to earn right from month one. So we train them up and they go out into the work environment. They come in once a week for training, once a week for practical skills, and then they go out and work right, yeah. right from the yeah. beginning. Mm. 
once the people are trained in these skills, how do you equip them just to come into a social environment and a social network and have the confidence to believe that they've got something worthy to contribute well, to their community? As, as part of the program, the day that they come in for training, they have one week they would have coaching and the next week they would have mentoring. So at that stage, you can meet them at their need, basically. Yeah, yeah. And then they've always got access to social workers and all the facilities that we do yeah, have anyway. Yeah. And what are the prevalent core needs that you find are a stumbling block for people to actually ch change their lives and turn their lives around, even if they have the willpower to do so? I think from, from a point of view, access to market is a big issue, and it always is in any business. Yeah. So in, in car washing, trying to find car parks private car parks that these people can go and operate in so that they can earn a living, so that they can run their business, is most probably the biggest challenge we have at the moment, wow. along with general funding. Y yes. Mm. I was about to ask you about uh, funding. How do you get your funding? Mm. The, the, the funding from a social care perspective is through DSD, through trusts, through uh, the corporate companies, that yes. sort of thing. However, what we, what we are doing is we're developing social enterprises so that we can contribute or support ourselves yeah, yeah. Uh, from a sustainability point of view. Mm -hmm. Because funding is becoming more and more difficult right. to, to yeah. get. Uh, thank you so much for your great work. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Let's join Dan. It's time for Win a Home on Afternoon Express. Yes, indeed, it's time for Winner Home on Afternoon Express, where we follow three talented young designers as they transform three empty properties at the Valdivia Estate into dream homes using finishes provided by Caesarstone and Plascon. And at the end of it all, we're giving away one of those completed apartments to you with over three million rand. Yesterday, our judges gave their scores on the contestants' first challenge, the guest bedroom. At the end of it all, Rudolph walked away with the highest score, well, now they need to put all that they have behind them because, and focus uh, particularly on their new focus, which is the challenge ahead. What will they have to do next? Let's find out. Hi guys, welcome to your next assignment. This week we're obviously discussing bathrooms. When designing a bathroom, it's very important to have an overall plan of what you want to do. Um, think about the different trades that are obviously you know, are, are put together to build a bathroom. Human scale and ergonomics is definitely one of the things that I think is probably the most key element when designing a bathroom. When you're designing a vanity or you are you know, designing a shower or a bath, you've got to think about those locations because they've got to be put in quite early on in the process. The second thing I would ask you to focus on would be obviously things like storage. Bathrooms obviously have a lot of products, they have a lot of toweling, and it's important that you consider those things when designing the bathroom. I would definitely think about about the materials that you use obviously have to be dexterous and they have to be very tactile materials purely because you know it's a space where there's steam there's water there's a lot of activity going on in bathrooms all the time and obviously you know with cleaning and detergents and things these products have to be relatively bulletproof so on that note I mean do you guys have any questions that you'd like to ask so John how do you introduce the feeling of warmth into a bathroom Think of it as a space where, you know, to create that moodiness, we would obviously like to throw in some warm sort of accent lighting and try and find opportunities sort of where we can light things from behind spaces. So for example, behind a mirror or underneath a vanity, just to get that beautiful accent glow. And then secondly, you've got to think about being able to sort of render your face properly in a mirror. So think about that lighting too. It's very, very important that when you do your makeup in the morning that you actually see, you know, as a, a realistic picture looking back at you. How do you find a balance between masculinity and femininity in a bathroom? That's a very good question. Look, I, I, I tend to, I mean, contemporary design, I think, you know, really kind of tackles that problem uh, to some extent. Men and women have different needs in a bathroom, which also has to be very, very carefully thought through. I would focus on, on, on you know, keeping things concealed, focus on the minimalism in the space, the simplicity of the space, and rather let the materials do the talking rather than trying to accentuate one or the other. Should we then still consider his and hers vanity? Uh, I definitely feel that a, a his and hers vanity is definitely the way to go. It is going to be a slight challenge for you, you know, knowing that the bathroom you're designing is quite compact, but I would definitely make an allowance for this because it seems to be the, the, the trend these days. And I think for that luxury feel, um, it's definitely something I would consider. Win your share of 5 million rand. Get a home loan and get one entry. Open a Nedbank account, move your salary, and you'll get another 10 entries. Simply dial star 120 star 762 hash to enter. Make things happen. Nedbank. 
Sure, so Winner Home is not going to be slowing down anytime soon. The next challenge is ready for our contestants, but it's time for us to take a look at each of our design con team's budget projections. Uh, projections, what's a projection? A Rudolph for Team Real Estate has a projected budget of 55,000 Rand, with his biggest projected expense being the fittings of basins, taps, and shower heads for 15,000 Rand. Joanne for Team Vizi has a projected budget of 60,000 Rand. Her biggest projected expense is tiling for 15,000 Rand. And finally, Minentle has the biggest projected budget of a whopping 80,000 Rand. His biggest projected expense is paint and tiles, which comes to 40,000 Rand. He must really have something exciting up his sleeve, and we hope he does, because he's got to really step up his game for Winner Home this year. Now remember that your vote counts because the design contestant with the most viewer votes at the end of Winner Home will win a 50,000 Rand cash prize. You have until Thursday, the 16th of June. And that's only two more days to vote for your favorite guest bedroom on privateproperty.co.za. And you also stand a chance of winning paint from Plascon to the value of 5,000 Rand. You will also be automatically entered to place into the grand prize draw where you could win one of the completed apartments valued at more than 3 million Rand. Now, Winner Home is brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Earlier on in the show, we, take, we take, took a look at a great organization in Cape Town called The Carpenter Shop, which provides ablutions and shelter to homeless people, as well as basic skills training to anyone who's unemployed and looking to improve their chance of finding work. We're back on the couch with the social enterprise manager, James McDonald, and we're joined by one of the social workers, Karen Kane, and one of their trainees, Amos Baleni. Welcome. Thank you. Lovely to have you with us. So what is your work? At, at TCS? Well, James has mentioned the ablutions and the training side, but I need to mention that we have a 40 bed shelter for male adults. So that's one of the things. And then we also have a clinic that we run once a week so that the homeless people living on the street, if they feel stigmatized or victimized at the clinics or the hospitals can come to the clinic where they're, they're accepted. And we do um, HIV testing, TB testing, blood pressure, diabetes, things like that, yeah. and they can be referred if it's something more serious. Now, once a person walks through your doors, what is your process with them? If they're wanting shelter at the shelter, then I screen them, and if it's really, really urgent, we can try and get them into a first phase shelter until there's space at my shelter. Otherwise, they go onto the waiting list until there's a bed available, and then they can move into yeah. the shelter yeah. at the carpenter yeah. shop. And how important is it that apart from just helping people with um, the ability to access ablutions and take a shower, that you actually just help them build up their confidence and their dignity? How far does that go? It's very important and that's why we run life skills um, at, at the carpenter shop, which uh, really, really does make a difference. Um, and just treating the people, a sense of giving them a sense of dignity mm. and self-worth. Mm. Amos, you're also a graduate at, uh, at the training school. Yes. How has the experience been for you? What have you learned? What do you remember most about it? I think what I remember the most about it is the level that you are being taught at. Yeah, it, it does not differ from tertiary education, but at the same time, it's like squashed into a two week or a month, depending on the level that you are being taught at. Because also, I am I, I matriculated, I did <clears throat> some tertiary level courses, but then the, I, I, I stumbled to find the kind of job I was looking for. But amazingly, what I am looking for, I had to go and find it where I found it at the carpenter shop. Hmm. And what's your advice to anybody watching right now who's in the same situation as you? I think for someone who is sitting at home watching, you know, it's like, a, as I've said, it's it's the level that you are being taught. It does not differ from the tertiary level education like colleges and what, what, because the mm. level, because for example, yesterday we were, when we were closing the, our session, we were doing financial discipline and budgeting. Wow. But it did not, it really it did not differ yeah. from a university <laughs> or, it was like you were being lectured. Yeah. The level and the people that are teaching you are people who are also qualified to teach you so, you cannot judge it like because it's like for free or something you are given the chance and because yeah. it's a chance that you are given. Yeah, yeah. And what are some of the most transformational and most memorable stories that you can share with us about people who've come through your program? 
Well, for me, it's when somebody stays at the shelter and instead of being asked to leave because they've been there for too long, they come and say they've actually managed to sort themselves out and they've become reintegrated into society or even reunited with their family. And we do have cases of people being, men being reunited with their families. Um, one person even went overseas to the Philippines to be reunited with his family. So those wow. are wonderful successes. Wow. What are the biggest psychological stumbling blocks that you're finding are quite prevalent? I think that a lot of the people on the streets suffer from depression. Um, we, we have a lack of psychiatric care for the people living on the streets. Um, they're not allowed, they, they can't hold on to their medication because they're moving around. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're not given medication if they don't have a fixed abode. Um, but psychiatric problems, bipolar, schizophrenia, those are all problems yeah. on the street. Yeah. Amos, what are your future plans? What do you plan to do with the training that you now have as a graduate? The training that I have, I, I plan to use the car wash. I intend to hire people so that I can have yeah. enough time to pursue my actual, my actual dream because it's not just about the car wash. Mm -hmm. they, they use the car wash because anyone can relate to it, but the business skills and the strategies they use are strategies that you can use in any business. So it's just that they use the car wash to apply those skills. So fortunately, I acquired those skills through the car wash. Yeah. Yeah. Any plans to, to, like, to replicate this in other mm. cities and other parts of South Africa? I think f firstly we, we're looking at replicating the business model into other areas and one is food preparation that we're looking at now. Mm. There's another one that is computers and we're having a look at which sort of area in computers we want to want to get into. But each one that we do will have a hub that generates an income that supports the training. For right. instance, the training that we're talking about now is supported by a hub. Yes. So, and what we're going to do as well is look at franchising it out to other, other parts of South yeah, Africa as well. That's mm. incredible. I think it's really needed. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Let's see what Dan and his dapper guests are up to in the kitchen. <laughs> Indeed. So we finished everything up and we've obviously got Katlejo and Ewan here from Expresso Morning Show with us in the loft today. It's good yeah, to have man. both of you. It's been uh, great being here. We've made you the super adventurous dad, Sami. And I'm going to let you that, do the honours of that one. Is that my dapper dad salad? And your dapper I'll give you guys a bit of both so you can test it out because dapper dads <laughs> need to be adventurous and yeah, adventurous dads course. need to be dapper. Of there course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Listen, oh, just watch out for your fingers there, bro. Oh my gosh. I'm an adventurous dad. What are you talking about? national television. An adventurous dad. Slicing your thumb open. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> listen, is there listen. even any meat in here? Some. You some. too. Well, we've got you here. What's on Expresso tomorrow morning? <laughs> Hold on, can I just say, South Africa, have a look at this. This is how generous Ewan Stratum is with these sandwiches. There's zero meat in that. He's the uh, protein What am man. I supposed to do with that? Aren't you on a diet? What on earth? Never that. Okay. Yeah. It's, anyway, it's, it's a hint, actually. While, while, while we enjoy this delicious meal, tomorrow we've got Zola coming in to do our culinary hotline where you can ask all of your questions. And then we talk about a very important thing, and it happened to my sister very uh, recently, identity theft. Uh -huh. Somebody actually cloned her card and stole like five grand from her account. Jeez, so, crazy. yeah, we'll be talking about that on the show. That is crazy. Also, we have uh, Brendan Paper. I mean, he's yeah. an incredible musician. He's making some serious waves in the music industry at the moment. Um, so, we, I'm going to be chatting to him tomorrow. And then we're also talking about, you know, this Father's Day coming up. Yeah. We talk about the role that fathers actually play mm. in a family. Yeah. So, so, what exactly is that role? Lots to catch up on Express tomorrow morning. From us here on Afternoon Express, good night. Happy eating. To Bye. Into this. What? <laughs> Yum! <laughs> Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we're joined by Professor Nazad Lova, who is leading the fight against the skin lightening movement, and we chat to entrepreneur and natural hair specialist Jabu Stone. The hottest address on TV is Winner Home on Afternoon Express, proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Another feel good production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means the world to us. Join the Afternoon Express family by subscribing to our channel right here. And we'll keep you up to date with all our recipes and, of course, our fabulous episodes. Also, feel free to leave a comment and share this video. We do love it when you express yourself.